It's just after 1 a.m. on October 31st, 1999. 217 people on board Egypt Air Flight 990 are waiting for takeoff. At 20 past 1 in the morning, First Officer Adel Anwar is going through his takeoff clearance with air traffic control. Tonight, Captain Rauf Noor el-Din and First Officer Gamal el-Batuti are the relief crew. They will take over after the first three or four hours and fly the plane until shortly before Cairo. Gamal el-Batuti used to be an Egyptian Air Force flight instructor. He is now one of the oldest first officers at Egypt Air. He is so much older than the other co-pilots that out of respect, they call him Captain. Hello, Jimmy. How are you? How are you, sir? Huh? What's new? I, uh, I slept, I swear. Just wait. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to sleep at all. I might come sit for two hours but and then... I, I, I slept. I, I slept. You mean you're not going to get up? Look, if you want to sit here, there's no problem. I'll go get something to eat and come back, all right? Fine, fine, look here. And with that, El Batuti leaves to get his meal. Everything's under control. Okay, Chief. Thanks a day. First Officer Anwar concedes and is ready to hand over to El Batuti. Normally, this is the most relaxed, easy part of a long flight for pilots and passengers alike. Excuse me, Jimmy, while I take a quick trip to the toilet. Go ahead, please. Before it gets crowded, while they're still eating, I'll be back to you. Egypt Air's Flight 990 appears to be cruising smoothly over the Atlantic. Speak as it never left. But then, the plane dips, plunging down. The nose pitches down, creating zero G and weightlessness throughout the aircraft. I rely on God. Whatever the first officer is intending, he says nothing except this phrase again and again. Captain El Habashi fights the disorientation of zero gravity, desperately trying to return to the cockpit. Warning signals indicate the dive is exceeding the maximum speed allowed for the plane, taking them to 99% of the speed of sound. In seconds, the engines stop and the power goes off, plunging the aircraft into darkness. Here, the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorders stop. No one knows what happened in the plane during the next two minutes. Stressed beyond endurance, the left engine is ripped from the plane. At 1.50 a.m., Flight 990 disappears from radar screens, crashing into the surface of the Atlantic Ocean, over 60 miles off the American coast. Coast Guard search and rescue get a call at 2.15 a.m. A plane has disappeared, and Coast Guard vessels are called to the scene. At the end of October, the waters of the North Atlantic are so cold that normally life expectancy is about five to six hours. At the crash site, only pieces are left. Within hours, authorities know there is little hope for survivors. 